good boy. Hey, crafty family. It's me. And today we are going to do some screw it and do it. Yep. We are because I haven't done any in a while. And um, I think this is probably I've done. I think I've done live streams for the 2018, but I have not done a video. And act this is the first time I'm doing an actual video for 2018. And it's crazy, crazy. So we're working in my journal page. If you watched the live stream I did yesterday of the journal page that you guys, if you're in my group anyway, you guys helped me um, make. And so I still have some mermaid-esque things sitting here. I have the gauze. I have the seaweed stuff that I used for it all sitting here. And I'm going to get out, mm, let's say, a few. And now the whole point, if you don't know, if you're not abreast of what's going on, that really is just a weird saying. I'm going to do six, believe it or not. I may not finish them all today, and that's okay. But anyway, if you don't know what screw it and do it is, what I mean by that, and, you know, you can do it on whatever you want. The whole point of it is is for you to do 10 minutes a day or 10 minutes, you know, 10, generally 10 minutes a day if you're not already creating a lot. If you're finding it hard to find time to get your creativity and your creating in in a day. Ooh, my nails are gross. Anyway, if you're finding it hard because you got work and you got kids and you're not able to get things done, this is a good way to spend 10 minutes. Now, obviously, you don't have to do six. You could just do one. Um, but a good time to choose to do the, your screw it and do it is with me right now. Like, take the time, hit pause, go grab your, go grab a little index card or a little anything, anything. It doesn't have to be exactly this. It doesn't have to be a Rolodex type of thing. It can just be some index cards that you take and punch holes in the corners of and then put a ring through it or tie them together or something, just something little as your screw it and do it things. And the whole purpose is just to say screw it and do some art. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be like, you know, actually I'll start with the light color. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It doesn't have to be a finished piece. You can just start it. You could just start it um, and finish it with 10 minutes tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Like if you do 10 minutes today and 10 minutes tomorrow, you know, every little bit will help for you to get it motivated to get creating. Or maybe you just don't have time. You know, a lot of times it's time. Sometimes it's motivation. And this is a great way to both to find the time because it's only 10 minutes and also to motivate you to create. You know, something else I've been doing every day since the first of the year or shortly thereafter is, I don't know if you ever watched the channel Roman Atwood. It's not a crafter. He's a YouTuber. He used to do pranks channel. He used to have a prank channel, but now he's a family vlogger um and so he started him and his family started doing push-ups every day they started out on january 1st doing one push-up january 2nd they would do two push-ups january 3rd do three and so on so on so on so on so on so i decided on the 5th of january that i was going to join in and so I started out by doing five push-ups just so I can keep up. And now it's the 17th and every day I've done it every day. Religiously, I have done my push-ups, but also I've added in crunches. So from day one, I thought, well, I don't want to just do push-ups. And so I do. So like today I did 17 push-ups and 17 crunches. So I don't do just one or the other. I do both. Now you could just do one. You don't have to do them both. But I just decided what was the point of doing the push-ups if I didn't do the crunches, in my opinion, anyway. 
when if you've seen my belly i can certainly use it but it's not too late to start it's only the 17th of january and even if it's even if it's the 30th of july it's never too late to start you can start at your pace you could start with five you could start with 17 right now and it literally if i can do it you can do it because it literally takes about a minute <laughs> but it's worth it because think of what i'll be doing in six months to a year when i'm doing you know or a year when i'm doing uh 300 and some odd push-ups and sit-ups every day think how strong i'll be Now that might be a little time consuming, but by then it'll be worth it. So I decided what I'm going to do is after the 30 days is up after January 31st in February, I'm going to do keep going with the same amount, but I'm going to add a second set. So if I am doing 31, uh, well, it'll be 32 every day because obviously you go January 31st and then February 1st, it'll be 32. February 2nd, it'll be 33. So you keep track of it that way. Um, you don't just start back over a one, but what I'm going to do is on February 1st, I'm going to do my 32 and then I'm going to do another set of, and start with five and build it up so that I'm doing two sets a day. So you can do that too. You can adjust it however you need to, but he got the whole family doing it. So he's got Roman Atwood's got the kids doing it, his wife. So I think it's pretty cool and definitely worth worth a try. I mean, if, I mean it's I mean I have arthritis, so it, it can be hard, but I can handle it. I'm not doing like like a man's style push up, which I hate using that term. It's a push up, but I'm I'm doing the kind where you're on your knees. That's easiest for me. So you could do it however you want. I'm just doing the half push-up, I guess it's called. I'm just doing the half push-up. I'm just kind of dry brushing all this on. I probably got too much of this dark blue out, but that's okay. I'm about to lighten it back up again. But I figure if I'm doing my push-ups and my crunches every day, it can't hurt. It can only make me stronger. But that's a good idea. I used to years ago, believe it or not. I used to do about 250 crunches and push-ups every day. I had no problem doing it. I still had a gut for some reason, <laughs> but I had a strong ass gut. That's for sure. But yeah, I would do, uh, I would do that on a daily basis. And, uh, yeah. I was pretty good at that. I'm just slapping the paint on here. And that's all you have to do. It's kind of, I don't know. I don't know about you. I, I'm going to assume it's fun for everybody to just be messy. I mean, is that just me? Like, I just love taking it and just being like, boop, 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 you know, like, no, who? I mean, without the music necessarily, you don't have to be like, burp, 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 or, or you could, maybe that'll help. <laughs> burp, 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 All right. Anyway. <laughs> um, but I like to just go, just make it a game and you'll get like a cool background, whether you, whether you intend to or not. If you use three colors that are different shades of a similar color or whatever, 
you're going to get, you know, and you do like three and you kind of dry brush it. And what I mean is I'm taking a little bit of paint and then I'm kind of brushing it over here. And then I'm just kind of sloppily throwing on, not even worrying about whether I cover it up. Um, whether I, you know, cover up all the white spots or whatever. But I think that looks pretty cool. I think what I might add is a little bit of green into the mix because I've got all this green that's going to go on there. So I want to kind of add a little bit of that green in. So I'm going to clean this up. But I love being messy. Like I love just going psh, 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 and just slopping things on. Not everything has to be this precise scientific thing. You can be sloppy. It's okay. It'll be okay, I promise. Let's see what kind of green I got here. I like this one. We can try this one. It's a lighter green, but I like it. I like it. It's called Lime Sherbet by Apple Barrel. You can get it for 50 cents at Walmart. But yeah, I like just being random and messy sometimes. And other times I don't, but you know, that's one of my favorite things is to just not think and just be like, just be like, whatever, you know. I'm not going to add as much of this as I did other colors. But it's just fun to be random and messy and to not really think about what you're doing because who cares? It's a piece of paper. You know, unless you're like this massive environmentalist who cries over every piece of paper that gets thrown away. Um, there's nothing wrong with being an environmentalist, but I mean, let's not get carried away here. I try to recycle every piece of paper I use, so you can't yell at me. But anyway, um, honestly, you can't get yourself worked up. I try to say this all the time, and it seems like no, it seems, I don't know. I don't know whether it's sinking in with anybody or not, but, you know, I say it all the time. We, if you're watching this, 99% sure you are never going to have your art, and I don't mean this in a demotivating way at all. I mean it in the complete opposite. But we are not doing this to get our stuff put into the Smithsonian, right? We, we are realistic. We, we are realistic about that. We understand that this isn't to get into the Smithsonian. Our, our, our works of art are not there to make us millions of dollars. I mean, we all have that reality, right? We're all realistic about that, correct? So in that case, freaking relax. Like, it, don't stress out. You don't have to stress out about what the end result is. Now, there's nothing wrong at all with wanting to become a better mixed media artist. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe not necessarily because you want to make money or that you want to be like the greatest and best, but just because you want to hone in on that skill of being an actual mixed media artist like Seth Apter or, 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 or Tim Holtz or many of the people that we look up to in the mixed media world. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. There's nothing wrong with being like, well, you know, I, I want to do this. I want to get better. Nothing wrong with that. And I, I support that. And that's what I'm here for, actually. But part of that, part of the learning process is learning, especially with mixed media, is learning to let go. Because it's not a fine art. You know what I mean? It's not drawing, like fine drawing and charcoal drawing where you have to kind of know your strokes and know the way you do things. Mixed media is a totally different monster. And so as much as you can learn techniques at the same time, you also, what's really important, believe it or not, and any mixed media artist will say the same damn thing. They cannot deny this fact that, that a lot of mixed media art is letting go, is not focusing on Oh, well, that little spot right there is not how I want it to be. And, and like, you know what I mean? Like that not, I'm telling you, ask any mixed media, actual professional mixed media artist, and they will tell you that it is not about perfection. Because if it was about perfection, they would be a fine artist instead of a mixed media artist. And you have to also, and you know, and, and there's also a, like a learning curve about 
learning how to be random as well because some people are so like conditioned to do everything perfect that they, they, it's hard for them to learn to be random well this is where this stuff comes in this is mix, doing these type of things doing mixed media mashup it teaches you to let go it just teaches you to just do whatever and not worry about it and who cares if you don't like it guess what see ya in the garbage it goes or i'll i'll gesso over it and make something else out of it do you know what i mean like you can practice techniques and background things till you're blue in the face but at the same time if you don't know how to be free and be relaxed and allow yourself to let go and not focus on little things so much you're never going to grow as an artist when it especially when it comes to mixed media that's the truth that is the truth so am i going to make these all the same no because I, you know these are mine so i want to make them a little different so i'm going to just glue things on here and there in different places and then um and we'll just kind of make different cards with similar background you know what i want to do i meant to put some poop i meant to put some of this on i just feel like doing some nautical themed uh well maybe i'll use um let's stencil let's grab that and stencil that sounds fun let me grab a stencil where's my star stencil here it is i knew i had that one out so we're just going to add some metallic stars and i'm doing these all in a similar theme but they're all going to have different quotes and different little bits about them they're not all going to be exactly the same or anything and i'm okay i you know this is for me this is for my i mean if i was just doing it without the camera being on i'd probably just do maybe i would do one maybe i would do all of them i don't know but um i want to sit here and kind of get you motivated too by you know hoping that you'll join me since i'm going to be here for a few minutes i'm hoping that you'll join me and sit down at some point here and be like yeah i'm going to work on something too I love hearing that you're working with me always. That's my favorite, it's like music to my ears. When I hear somebody say, oh, I'm doing this while you're working, even if they're not doing the same thing as me, even if they're just like, oh, I'm working on tags or I'm working on this and I'm working on something totally different, you know, like that makes me happy. I like to hear that you're being creative, especially with me when I'm doing it. It's awesome. Maybe we'll do two stencil designs. We'll start with the stars, then we'll do something else. I'm just doing a whole little mixed media thing here. And like I said, this is not what you have to do. You don't have to grab six cards and be like, oh, now I got to do six cards. No, this isn't about doing what I'm doing. I'm just doing six cards because I got time to do six cards. And even if I don't feel like doing them all the way to completion and I'll complete them later, you know, but you have to complete them later. You can't just not. You know, you got to learn to complete things and finish things and, and be done with it and move on with your creativity so that you can, you know, I don't know. I think it's important to complete what you start. Not right. You don't have to complete it right today. You don't have to complete it tomorrow, but within a reasonable time, you know, I think it's important to complete your artwork and not just abandon it, abandon it, you know halfway through or whatever it'll, it'll help you with a lot of things not just your art I, i'm luckily i'm a capricorn i don't know if that really has anything to do with it but capricorns have a tendency to complete what they start um and plus i have ocd and add so i'm ocd about keeping up on what i start and since i'm add i tend to start a thousand things but then i get ocd so i have to complete them all <laughs> that can be a bit of a curse but i mean i don't know i i feel like it's, it's an important trait to have to finish what you start 
I think that builds integrity. And I think that in 2018, if you aren't already like that and you have a tendency to start a project and then halfway through stop, I think maybe that's a, a good thing to, to work on this year. You know, let me know in the comments below. Do you do that? Do you need to work on that this year? Because if you do, then I'll help you get there. We'll work together and we'll get motivated to complete our projects and to make sure we find time for our art and to not stress out about the little things and not let ourselves freak out over some paper. I mean, because, I mean, that's it. It's what it is. It's just paper. I mean, none of us are, I mean, some of us work on canvases, but it's rare. I don't know many people that work on canvases all the time. I mean, if you're working on a canvas project, obviously you're working on it for a reason. You want it to be nice, yada, yada. I completely understand that. That's a different monster. You know what I mean? That's a different, that's a whole different thing. And even, even then, you know, that usually you could take your time and you could work slowly, whatever. But if you're just doing like we're doing, like our mixed media mashups, our journal pages, our little ATCs and our tags and, and all that stuff. It's time to, it's 2018. I don't know how many times I'm going to say the year. Maybe I'm saying it for myself so that I remember it's 2018 and stop putting 2017 on everything I write. But my point is it's time to let go. It's time to grow as an artist. Because even though we're not like fine artists, we're still artists. But it's a different kind of, it's a, I think it's the best kind of artist because, oh, I got to turn on my heat gun. Hold on. They're all on, I have my heat gun and my two glue guns all on one power strip. And I just shut off the whole power strip before I go to bed. I might leave it on all day. So my glue gun might be on all day as long as I'm home. But if I leave the house or go to bed, I turn everything off. But I think mixed media art is my favorite type of art because it's so free. But some people, they get stifled by it because they're so used to having so much control over things in their life or either that, either, either people are, you know, naturally control freaks, which hello, I'm a Capricorn. I am a natural control freak. I get worked up when things aren't perfect. And that is the truth. You can ask my ex-husband, he will tell you. Because, like, if I threw a party, or I had a dinner party, or I had friends coming over, if the house wasn't absolutely perfect, I would throw a fit. If when I cooked dinner for other people, if it wasn't absolutely perfect, it would drive me nuts. Like, you can ask him, he will tell you that's the one downfall, is I was a massive perfectionist. And I still am. Like, I had people over for New Year's, and I made sure that... All the beds were all cleaned and smelled nice and that, you know, there was towels on all the beds, even if somebody didn't want to use them, you know, or didn't need to use them for the next day. And I made sure there was enough food for everybody, enough dessert for everybody. And I made sure I had goodie bags for like I went above and beyond, you know, for the most part, because that's what I do. I made sure there was champagne for the champagne toast. Like, that's just how I am. I'm naturally a perfectionist. So if you're a perfectionist, I'm not trying to like say things because I don't know what I'm talking about because I definitely know what I'm talking about. I am a perfectionist. Hello, my name is Stacy. I am a perfectionist. But I've learned how to not be a perfectionist when it comes to doing mixed media. And in turn, it has made me a way better mixed media artist. And that is the truth. That's the truth. Gold circles. Um, and I believe that because it's, well, I believe it because it's the truth, but um, what's this? Is this white? Yeah. Um, I'm going to use the gold. Once I let go of that 
everything had to be perfect thing because I, you know, and of course, it, it, yes, it helped that since I was a kid, I used to do all kinds of weird, what would be, I guess, considered mixed media. Um, I was always putting together weird art things and like just, I was just one of those kids that was just always doing something paint wise or always wanting to add this to that and more is more in my, it was always that way. I was always like more is more, you know. Like, I was always just into, like, decorating and painting everything wild, crazy, and mixed media-esque. That was always my style. Um, and so, yeah, I've got a lot more experience than some people. But considering how much experience I have, I'm not as good as so many other people out there. But guess what? I don't care. You know what I mean? I don't care who I'm better than. I don't care. Like, when people say, oh, you're so good at things, to me... I, I don't like hearing that because I don't feel that that's the truth because I feel like I'm no better than anybody else. I've just learned to relax. That's it. I'm no better than any of you watching at all. Actually, in fact, I mean, I see the talent. That's kind of cool. I see the talent in a lot of you guys and a lot of you guys you make it sound like you don't have talent and you stress yourself out i think but i see it just like everybody in my group is talented and i think i think people need to give themselves a break you know just give yourself a break don't pressure yourself. Nobody is looking at your artwork and judging it. And if they are, you're in the wrong group of people because my group don't do that. That doesn't happen in my group. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know anybody in our group that judges anybody's artwork. They wouldn't be allowed in my group. That would just be the end of that. I don't know how long these are going to take to dry. And I don't really want to have to edit, so I'm hoping they won't take that long and then I can dry them with a heat gun, but it may or may not have to be edited out. Which is fine. I, I you know, I'll deal with it. I'm trying. I, I, I've learned, you know, editing takes a long time. Like people don't, people who don't do YouTube videos and they don't edit their videos or whatever, don't understand that editing is the worst part. Of putting up a video it's the longest part it takes longer than making the video believe it or not so whenever you hear a youtuber like a larger youtuber or whatever talk about editing and how much of a pain in the ass it is they're telling the truth it really is a pain in the ass and i can't imagine those who edit their videos with like all the fancy transitions and the different little effects in their videos because it's it's not easy I can promise you that. So cut a YouTuber a break when they talk about, you know, uh, you know, editing taking so long and why they can't get a video up in a timely manner sometimes because it's just, yeah, it can be just a little, little daunting. Just a little more. I really like this stuff. I love the gold paste. Like, I, I just love the colored pastes because, yeah, I know you can paint color your own, but you can't really, one of the things you can't do is metallic, like make your paste, like homemade paste metallic because, yeah, you can add mica powder, but because it has marble dust in it, they put something completely different in these. There's no marble dust in these because otherwise the, the gold would not be metallic. So they use something else to give it the texture, to give it the thickness. I don't know what exactly. But they do because marble dust would automatically make whatever you're doing matte because it is a chalk and chalk is not shiny. It is matte. So you have to keep that in mind. Oh, I left that on there too long. You have to keep that in mind when you're adding kind of like shimmer powders to things that, you know, if you add shimmer powders to like. 
Um, if you add shimmer powders to things that are matte, like matte medium or gesso or stuff like that, that has marble dust in it, which is a matte product or a mattifying product, I should say, then it's not going to be shiny. You're wasting your, your medium. So I don't know what exactly they use, obviously. So I can't recreate stuff like this because I don't know what they're using. It doesn't exactly have ingredients on it. So, I don't know, it's not even in English. Because this stuff is from, it's a, oh crap, I forget. They sent me this stuff to review, but unfortunately this stuff is not widely available in the United States. You have to find somebody, if you're in the United States, you have to find somebody in the UK who has a little L, is it L-I-D-L or L-Y-D-L? Like one of those stores, little. They carry it. Janet had got some for me and then I had contacted the, com the company asking about where to get some of it and they ended up sending me a sample pack because they knew, I told them that I had a channel and I wanted to use their products because I thought they were really cool. And so we were talking back and forth about it and they sent me some stuff. But you can't get it here. They kind of made it sound like you could. And I'm like, well, I mean, you can order it on, I think. Well, I don't know. Could I, was I able to order it on that site? I don't know. But either way, their, their stuff is pretty cool. And reasonably priced if you get it in the UK. Like Janet had picked up a box of four things. I don't remember if this was the one. Yeah, this must have been the one. And they gave me different things like sprays and stuff. But four of these pastes in a box was $4.99. I think that was euros. So what is that? Six fifty? Seven bucks for four of these? Here, this alone would be eight dollars. You know what I mean? Like it's that's a that's a really good price. I this just dried right on there, didn't it? Let me put this in my bucket. So, yeah, I would like to get some more different, like, I'd like to get a bronze and a, like, a silver and a different, I mean, I know I have, obviously, the, the other types of paste, the, um, the deco arts ones, but those are more like rubs, and yes, you can use them as paste, but I like the fluidity of this stuff. Alright, so, for my screw it and do it projects, yes, they all look the same, but when they're done, they're not going to look the same. And obviously, you don't have to do yours this way. You do whatever color you want. Yeah, I think these are going to have to dry. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the camera, let these dry, and then we'll come back. Well, it'll be not, no time for you, but I'll be right back as I let these dry. Hold on. All right. All right. All right. So we're back. These are dry. Didn't take long, like 15 minutes. They are dry. And I, oh, you know what? I left the little pieces I had over there. Hold on. Somehow when I got up earlier, these came with me and got stuck to my sweater so they were on my I put them on my desk I did so let's just find my glue and we'll do some sticking and we'll just see what we get we'll see what we get Mm -hmm. Maybe and this is just um if you didn't see my journal that we did, this is just gauze that I painted and then dried and it got like crispy 
and uh, and I used it in my journal, which I already put my journal away, but so now it's getting glued on here as like a partial nautical theme because it's like netting, you know, kind of, or kind of represents netting. I'm just going to take off the edges. fingers stick to it more than anything. That's good enough. And I'm just basically going to add that to three pieces and then add some of this stuff to three pieces and kind of mix it up a little bit maybe. I don't want to make them too incredibly thick. It's a little harder to glue down. Actually, I should probably use the other glue for this. This stuff glues better with, or I can knock it on the floor, you know, either or. But this stuff seems to glue better with uh, this Tombow Mono liquid if you're interested in getting this glue which I recommend for hard to tack down items when you need a fine point if you look in the description below scroll below this video it'll say show more because all of you know I don't know why they do that why don't they just keep it open to begin with but hit show more it'll pop open my whole description down there and maybe I'll put it here and you will see a link amongst all the links below that says some of my favorite Amazon supplies. And if you click on that link, you will find. And actually, if I can remember, I'll put individual links to Amazon where you can get this if I remember. But if I forget for some reason, all you have to do is scroll down. Look where it says my favorite Amazon things. And I have like my own little list of things. It's kind of like a, uh, it's not like my stuff. I'm not selling it, but it's, it's a list of my favorite products all in one area. So if you click on that link, it'll bring you to that list of, of things that I use pretty, you know, really often. So Um, I'll use those anyway, even though they kind of fell apart on me. But anyway, so this glue is in that list along with a bunch of other things. So I advise you to peruse that list and check it out because you might find things in there that you don't have that you're like, oh yeah, I do need that. And it might end up being helpful to you. Maybe not, but... It's worth the gander. And if you know any other crafters who might need some of the things off that list, you know, I'd appreciate it if you shared the list on your social media and said there's, you know, explain that there's some good things in there for people. 
for their crafting needs. And I update the list as much as I can. Because as I remember, oh yeah, I use this too and this works and I'll put it in the list. And also like whenever I do, you know, if I do a video or something and there, there might be some supplies in there from videos I've done recently as well. Like there was, um, you know, there might be certain things in there from videos I've done. I don't know. You know what I mean. And then there's also links to my Patreon and links to my Etsy. And my Patreon is a way that you can support my channel. Um, support me, support my channel uh, by joining my Patreon. You click on the link below and then you pledge a certain amount of money every month. And it's like, like you know, like $5. And for that $5, let's say, there's different tiers. You get something different in each tier. But let's say the $5 tier, let's say you want to pledge for that one. Anything $5 and above, you get access to a secret Facebook group. And that secret group... Um, is just for my patreons there's not many people in the group so it's a nice small close-knit group of like 40 something people we do swaps every month and the nice thing about it is and of course this isn't foolproof but you know one of the nice things about it and somebody had pointed it out to me a while ago and i hadn't thought of it until then a couple months ago they said you know the nice thing about the patreon group is because everybody, you know, is giving their $5 a month, you know, as as one of your patrons on your Patreon to support your channel, and, you know, in turn, they get to be in this secret Facebook group, the swaps are most likely not going to have many flakers because, you know, obviously, it's a smaller group. And secondly, people are paying five dollars a month and that's one of the one of the one of the uh pros to to being one of my patrons is being able to have access to that group so why would they swap on a on a, or flake on a swap you know what i mean and that makes sense so you know it, it's it's nice that way it's it's a good group we do swaps every month unlike the main group which we don't do swaps in we just do the challenges but we also do challenges in that group um so and then also you get something mailed to you from me every month it could be a postcard an atc some embellishments something like that and then depending on what tier you're in if you're in one of the higher tiers anything ten dollars and up and you get access to a class every couple of months you get a live class that nobody else gets access to but the people in the patreon group that are in the tiers ten dollars and above so you'll get classes if you're in twenty five dollars um get you a class every month so you get an actual class a live stream class every month which, I mean, you go and take a class from anybody else, it's going to be $60, you know, every class, whereas this. And plus, you know, if even if you're in the $5 tier, you may not get classes every month. But I do live streams randomly on the, in the, just for the patrons, you know what I mean? Like, just do live streams, just separate, you know, private live streams. And plus the classes that I do for the higher tiers. If you're a $5 patron, I put you guys into like a drawing and I pick some of the lower patrons to go into the classes with the higher tiered patrons. So 
So either way, a lot of you are getting into, you know, a lot of the people that are in the $5 tiers are getting classes that normally they wouldn't get. You know what I mean? So it's kind of cool. It's fun. It's fun. So anyway, here is my base. Uh, that's what I did for each of them. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Oh, and I have this too, which, you know, I could probably do like a little flower with this or something. I did seaweed in my journal with this, but I'm wondering how hard it would be to do a very small flower. Let's find out, shall we? Let's do like, like that small and I'll cut, I'll see if I can cut a circle. To just do a little flower, even though that's not very nautical, but. And then maybe I'll do a little bit of a bigger one. I can have it a little layered, like so. Even though flowers aren't necessarily nautical, but you know, whatever. I think it will be fun anyway. So take one of these and take one of these. And crinkle them up, stick a little gem in the middle, and they can be like a little sea flower. That's what we'll call them, sea flowers. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. We call them whatever. Where'd my box of gems go? I lost them. Let me see where they go. There they are. I'm always losing these things. Let's see. I can just put a bunch of little ones here. I don't know why there's a bead in there. Oh, we could put a bead in the middle of one. Don't matter. And my picky stick, pick up stick thing. I'm going to flip some of these over. I end up picking up so many clear ones. That's all right. That's all right. No need for glue gun. Just kind of squishing it. Stick a little thing in the middle. Well, it won't stay unless I glue it, I imagine. Right there. So these are teeny tiny, teeny tiny, 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 tiny little flowers that I'm just squishing up. And then I glue them and squish them so that the glue makes them dry, kind of crinkly and crunchy. And then I put some glue and we put an upside down rhinestone. Get back there. There we go. 
another one. Easy peasy. We'll call these sea flowers. Lift that up. I might need the stick. Whew, I'm getting hot in here now. I wish my heat would regulate somehow. They need to come fix it. They need to put in a new defrost board or whatever because that's what's wrong with my heat. They came out and checked it and the defrost board was no good. So, good times. that happened <sighs> come on dude this thing is not very not very good I need something else that picks up gems a little better and releases them when I want to put them down that's the biggest problem I have with that thing oh I have just enough one two three four and then five and six and then I have a extra two there but cool beans I'm just crinkling it up and kind of rolling it back out uh oh uh oh hold on hold on I need to shut that off that was my phone because you know Leave it to my phone to come on when I'm recording a video. I will call them back, whoever they are. And the last one. So they're each going to get a sea flower. I thought I was going to do each one of them different, but it seems like I'm doing them all the same. They're all going to have a different quote. They're all kind of different. They're not exactly the same. That's okay. It's mine. I don't care. I like them. I'm not. It's nobody else is going to see them. They're mine. Well, I mean, you guys are seeing them, but what I mean is I could do them however I want. I don't have to pressure myself into thinking that they all have to be any certain way. That's ridiculous. That's part of the problem why people get stressed out because they think certain things have to be certain ways because, oh no, if it's not, you're in big trouble. Nobody should feel that way. Just enjoy your stuff. Enjoy what you make. All right, let's put these little suckers back in where they belong. Okay. 
Okay. All right, now we can take our little flowers and put them where we want them to be. Ooh. Ooh, webs all over the place. Those I don't want necessarily. I don't like glue webs. They drive me nuts. Put one there. We can put one up here. We can put one up here. We can put one right here. We can put one right here. Need the glue stick. And then the last one. That can go right there. Alrighty. Sweet. Now, I don't have mermaids small enough to go on here, but what I can do, what we can do, um, wipe off the glue off our hand, is make little mermaid tails because I can't draw worth a damn, but I can draw a mermaid tail. That's a pretty simple shape. And you know what I can do it from? I can do it from this. Maybe? We'll see. We'll see how it works out. Let's see. Um, let me see the pencil that I can erase. Like this. So we want it to be small. Small enough. Let's see how big that is. That's good. Now we'll just cut it out. Still too big, so we'll have to bring it down just to cut it down just a bit. But look how cool that looks. Although I gotta erase the lines off, I should have done it on the back side. There's my eraser, and I got one. Here it is. Come on. Erase, jackass, erase. This can go there and we can like put an outline on it or maybe I could put a glitter outline on it that's a good idea so what I'll do is some glue
here's our tail. Now you can't see it as well as you would after I put some glitter on it, but when I outline it in glitter, it's going to look cool. So we're going to do one on here too. We might do mermaid tails on three and then do like starfish on the other ones, like some sort of starfish type of thing. That's what I'm thinking. I did it again. I should have done it on the back. I'm such an idiot. Try to erase that. doesn't matter because the glitter is going to cover it anyway so who cares who cares this one there so drawing a mermaid tail is easy Drawing a mermaid. <laughs> That's a little harder. Just a tad. Let's see, maybe we can get mermaid here. This time I'll do it on the back. Come on, give me some glue. Still better than having the big bottle, but I put it in the little bottle so it would give me the glue faster. Stop it. It's very hard to put thick glue on the back of a thin paper. Very hard. But I didn't want to use Mod Podge because I think with all the texture on here, Mod Podge wouldn't have really glued it down very well. All right, so we got three with mermaid tails. <sighs> now we got to draw a starfish, which I can't draw very well. So Maybe. Let's see if I can 
only cut this out once and cut out. Get back here, paper. And cut out three because that one came out okay. Not great, but okay. And uh, I don't want to have to do it again. So we're going to we're going to do it this way. There we are. Good enough. Just a wonky star that will hopefully kind of look like a starfish. And this one I need to erase because I drew on the front of it again. So you can keep it simple. I mean, that's nothing. Draw your own embellishments. Just make random things. You don't have to be any kind of artist. Because I drew them sloppy. But you get the drift. The gist. I don't know. I can't speak today. Reset. My brain needs a reset because I can't talk. So today's Wednesday. Hopefully I'll get this video up today. But on Friday is my birthday. That's special. Not really. I'm going to be 45 years old. That's insane. I don't want to be 45 years old. Can I go be back to being 21? That I'd appreciate. So, um, oh, I just realized how am I going to get a quote on here? I'll run out of room. Well, let's see. Maybe I have some things that's only one or two letters that I can do. Let's see. Like, there you go. Like, be good and time after time and carpe diem and smile. We can use some of these. That'll work. They're cute. We can do like carpe diem. It would be cute if it was spelled C A R P, like like the fish, like a cart. Put smile on that one. Let's see what else we got? Good day, sunshine. That's a cute one. Let me 
energy. Thanks. Things are falling out of my drawers up there. Time after time. Today is the day. It is. Today is the day to say screw it and do it. That's what today is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And you could just type things out and then print them on a piece of paper. And yeah. Although this one I wanted to put there, but it's very lumpy. Well, I guess maybe if I put some little pop dot things on them, it would work because it would a stiffen it b make it stick maybe we'll try it and see although i may need to make smaller ones and cut some of these in here Put a little hot glue on these. Hmm. <laughs> that's a little wonky, but that's all right. That's okay. This one doesn't need a. Neither does this one. I usually wouldn't hot glue. Copy paper, but in this case, whatevs. Because this might not work very well, but the hot glue will work. It'll grab. There we go. That works better. So that's what I do. There we go. I'll save those in my little baggie. And when I need smaller ones. Alright. Now that they've all got their little words, now the only thing left is to add some glitter. So let's see. I'll take some of this and I'll outline the mermaid tails in this color. If it's going to work. Ooh, no, don't do that. Stupid thing. Mm -hmm. 
one. Three, three of those, and then I'm gonna use gold, good, good, good gold for the starfish. And three. And then I'll take some of the clear and I can put some little dots of the clear on my flower Let's give it a little extra sparkle hey no 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 jackass Got it all on there haphazardly. And voila. The only other thing you can do is if you want to, um, let's see, I have a blue marker. I have a teal marker somewhere. I don't know where the heck it is right now. So let me see, is there a teal marker up here? One of these markers. Here we go, one of these. Does it work? Yeah, it works. So I can go around the edges of the writing on the little, these are the paint over pens by Jane Davenport, but Now you could make these ATCs or tags or, you know, just adjust the scale. 
you can make a card, whatever. How cool is that? So, that is what they are. Cute, right? Very cute. Stupid autofocus likes to, oops, likes to pulsate for some reason. And then the last one is this one. So yeah, so my 10 minute art turned into like over an hour or so. What, like an hour and a half? I don't know how long we've been recording, but I don't care because I was having fun and you could have stopped at any point and restarted again. You don't have to finish your project. That's not the point. You could start it, work for 10 minutes and tomorrow work for another 10 minutes or what have you. Uh, the point is just to get creating, get moving, Keep that brain and your creativity stimulated. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will, as soon as these are dry, I will file them in my in my little box. But yeah, I'll put the date on the back of these on when I made them, and they'll just be for me. They're just art for me, just for my creativity. And most of the things I make, I usually give away. But if it's in a journal that is my journal and or if it's in like this type of thing where it's gonna be in a box or something it's gonna be for me I'm not giving these away um, but it helped me come up with some ideas too for other things you know so you know it's it's a good exercise to do the 10 minute a day obviously if you can go longer than 10 minutes go longer than 10 minutes but start off by just grabbing a couple of cards and throwing some paint on it and then going, oh yeah, that looks like I could do this with it and work from there, you know? But, you know, just anything to get your mind creating. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a thumbs up, please. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and also comment down below and let me know, are you doing the screw it and do it? And also, what do you think of my cards? Do you think they're cool? I don't like them. But anyway, the links are below for the group that I'm in, or that I, that's my group, not that I'm just in, but links are below so you can join the group. Um, you could join the group and uh, have a lot of fun with us. There's all kinds of links below, so check those out. Uh, and that's it. I will talk to you all later. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people and have a great day. Bye. Mm -hmm.